I can hear you. Can you hear me, brother? Hey, what's up? Hey, man? what's up? What's up? How you been? I'm not, I'm doing. I'm just practicing my set for the Saturday. Cool, cool. Hey, yeah. first of all, wow, uh, what's good, everybody? This is Imprecisely. I'm your host, Jordan Vanzola, and I got another special guest with me today. A good friend of mine, DJ Takai. What's good, bro? Hey, what's up, man? How's you doing? How's everything going with you? Life is good, man. I'm blessed. Can't complain. How about you? Up. Uh, you know what? Uh, as I said, you know, I was. Well, I gotta be honest with like I try every morning to say thank you to the Lord, <laughs> but we're only human, right? So right. You know I mean? like sometimes I, I totally forget. So yeah, so but yeah, so nice. Hey man, for so for those watching who don't know, you are one of the most talented and known DJs, I would say, on the island of Oahu or the state. Wow, I appreciate Hawaii. that, man. No, I appreciate for sure that, that I know personally anyway. Uh, yeah, a lot. Um yeah, I just I just want to shout you out real quick before we get into this interview, uh, before we get into this conversation. Um, DJ Takai here, he he's one of the very first DJs who has played my music publicly for a lot of people, like in in the vicinity where there were a lot of people. Um, because you for people who don't know, you DJ what was it every Thursday at UFC at Kelly Gym? Well, like. Every first and the end of the month. Right. Yeah, so right. Yeah. So um, I remember one time I I released a remix I did. It was um yeah Twenty One Savage and J Cole. There's a song a lot. Right. Right. And I um I remixed it, and I I just I love that beat. I love that style. That J Cole old school Kanye West style with the right. samples and all that. And then I so because I love those type of beats, I went in and I I I, I shredded that beat. You know what I'm saying? And I remember you you showed me so much love on it on social media. And right. you, you were like, yo man, I wanna I wanna like you you approached me. You're like, let me I wanna play one of your songs. I wanna play that one the uh, next time I or do you have any songs you want me to play when I um next time I spin at the gym? And I was like, I was just so taken aback. I was like, what? Really? No, I was so I was and you told me what date, what time. So I made sure I went to the gym at that time. It's even on my Instagram. Like I I, I went. I walked up to you recording. Uh, you were playing my song out to the speakers, and there was like hundreds of people working out. I was like, dude, that 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 moment for me was so special, and I, I appreciate it so uh, much. So from the bottom of my heart, bro. If I didn't thank you enough back then, thank you, man. That means a lot to me. Oh no problem. Cause like um, I got a good. Um, he's like a brother to me, Travis. Um, shout out to him. Yeah. DJ Travis. He he's a he does gigs also. He's a DJ also, and he he always plays my songs. And I'm super grateful for that. So you were like the second person in a different setting, different crowd of people, like putting my music and my voice out there for a bunch of right. strangers to for a bunch of strangers to hear. And I've seen some people like they were like getting into it and just, like people I know were like, "Yo, this is you." I was like, "Dude, so hey, thank you so much, bro. That means yeah. that meant so much to me. It still does, and I I appreciate uh, you greatly really yeah. for that." But it, yeah, it's all about um, I. Any artist that comes up, you know, ask me to play, I'll play for them. Man. Like, mm -hmm. even on Twitch, like, even I go on a Twitch channel, they're like, hey, they'll introduce me. You know, I'll, I'll drop their, I'll drop their, their track, you know, mm -hmm. especially if it's, if it's a, to that genre, I'll drop into the track and I'll announce it over the thing. So, but like I said, it's all about networking and just showcasing everybody's talent throughout the world, just basically sharing yeah. everybody's talent. So, you know, no, I agree. That was an awesome track. You got to give me more tracks, man. <laughs> I, I, for sure, bro. I got like, a lot. I still have it, you know. No, it's no pun intended. I got a lot. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. You, you got to give me, you got to, you got to give me, you got to give me one. I'll drop it on Hawaii Infamous Clay this okay. Saturday. Around, give me like a 105 track beat. I'll okay. give you a shout out. I'll give you hey. a shout out um, on the thing. I'll drop it on my set because I'm planning to put a hype set because this is nice. like a big platform for me. Right, um, right. Infamous Clay. That's more. Um, like DJ Technique, Flip, uh, Steezy, all them that side. I never okay. was really too much affiliated on that side. But, you know, we're all as a family. But, you know what I mean? I just said, you know, I got invited. So it's like, wow, like, wow you know what I mean? So the, it's mm -hmm. a time to showcase what you can do. But I'm going to do me, man. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, I like to think out the box when I DJ. So I was like, I'm, I'm just going to do me. And that's how it goes, man. So No, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, got that, you got that beard going on, man. The yeah, mustache. I mean, there's what I would. If you consider this, if you consider this a beard. <laughs> it's not even, yeah. Um, so just taking it way back, um, 
how long have you been DJing and when did you start? How did you get your start? When did you realize this was your passion and that this is what you wanted to do with your life? Because you're you're really good, man. I, I applaud you. You're I, really talented. Well, okay. So basically, I started my DJ career back in 1989. It was, uh, uh, well, I was 20 years old then. <laughs> Yeah, it was from it was in Cerritos, California. At that time, we didn't have no laptops. You know, everything's all crates, mm -hmm. um, CERN Vegas, pyramid mixers, and everything. But you know, I definitely want to give my brother a big shout out. His name is DJ Double Play. He's a pretty well known DJ, man. He's with he's a part of the Snapback DJs out of Las Vegas and everything. Okay. Um, so he's my actually my mentor, yeah. So yeah, so he's the one that taught me how to DJ and I, I couldn't pick it up like that. You know, with vinyl record, you gotta you got to mix by ear. Like now with Serato, you can kind of cheat because you can see, you know, you can see what's, if you're going off or nothing. But I always tell DJs out there, you got to start with the basic fundamentals. Just do it by ear right. and everything. So I, I, I did it by ear, but I just couldn't get it. You know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> and then every time we would go DJ, like I would have my favorite vinyl records because I know it's, it's an intro beat. Like, oh, it's, it'll be perfect. I know how to mix it in. Yeah, so blah. I was definitely nervous at that time. So, you know, big shout out to my brother. He's my mentor. And just everything took off. I started with a group named um, Modern Music. Um, that's how I met DJ Mello. He's a, I don't know if you guys heard the world famous beat junkie. He's with the world famous beat junkies. And my brother, um, his name is DJ Double Play. Um, he just, he's so close friends with a lot of the name DJs now in the world. So, you know, I, I pretty much like, you could say I kind of like carried off his name a little bit. So okay. it was a blessing to, you know what I mean? He would introduce me to other people as well, but I would just make friends with his friends and it's all a big, uh, a, a big family. And I started my career over there, but you know, at the time, you know, I'm a kid, so I didn't really have money mm -hmm. to buy like vinyl records and everything. So, and then see, I lived in California. My parents were, I'm adopted. So I got two parents. So I lived okay. in California with them. Yeah. I kind of got on the bad side a little bit. And then, my real father sent me back to Hawaii with my <laughs> adopted parents. Mm. So I was on a hiatus. I didn't really DJ. So I was out of Hawaii for a little while. Then I spin with, um, then I jumped on like, you know, mobile gigs, um, DJ, uh, mobile um, companies like DG Mobile. I started off with them, you know, but I really didn't have, um, you know, vinyl records of my own. I would just borrow from them and everything back in the days. But then when I went back to um, Vegas, that's when Serato came out, the laptop came out. Right. So I, I, lived, I went to Vegas to live um, over there for, I think I lived there for about like almost five years, four or five years. And, you know, at the time I didn't have no DJ equipment. My brother then had the full blown equipment and every, and I was living with him. And every time I would come back from work, I would like, you know, drop an hour for mix and everything. And yeah, so, and then I, and then afterwards I, I moved out and my own, but you know, living in Las Vegas, but you gotta have a strong mind to live with it. By the time it's just party and DJ, but still yet, I still didn't have money to buy a laptop mm -hmm. for me to DJ. I would pretty much like bump from people that would have like a USB with songs in there. Hey man, let me put your songs in there, everything. So basically I didn't have a turntables, mixer. I had no equipment. Yeah. So yeah, so you know, and then I pretty much like, you know, you know, hit rock bottom in Las Vegas. That's when I decided, you know, as I said, I I I Pray to the Lord as I said, you know, hey, you know, Lord, like I'm stuck in this run, you know, I'm everything, like I'm just going downhill. And he showed me a path and I came back home. And that's when everything took off when I came back home. All the blessings and everything. And then uh, what you would call it, by the time I was divorced already. So I came back home and then I met Noako Mori, the, mm -hmm. the my my son's mom. And you probably know the story what happened. Yeah, so she's Japanese. So when Filipinos and Japanese collide, oh, it's just, oh, <laughs> you know, Japanese are very strong minded. I was a very impatient person. And, you know, I've been with her for six years. So over that time, she, she molded me to be the person I am today. So it's a big thanks um, to her that she molded me. So I still never had money. But yeah, I still never had money to buy DJ equipment. But her, she would always like remind me, hey, so you should start DJing again. That's your passion and everything. But she would like force me to something like, ah, oh, nah, I don't want to. Not to. We would actually get into like a small argument like, hey, don't force me to do what I don't want to do anymore. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, I, I didn't have any fear and everything, right? So, yeah, and I just told myself one day, I said, you know what? I'm just going to 
try it out. So I, um, I had an opportunity with um, JT Sounds. Um, it's a mobile DJ company. So I went over there. Still yet. I never had a laptop. But I went in there and then. Still no laptop. I started yeah, I still, yeah, I started. Yeah, at some point, playing. you're going to get a laptop in this story, right? <laughs> trust me. It, it, yeah, trust me. I have. So, um, um, so at that time, Miwasan says, hey, you know what? I'm going to buy you a, a, a mixer. I'm going to buy you a laptop. I had, she actually let me borrow money to buy a mixer and a laptop. So I bought my, she, we, uh, my friend Eric, he owns Spin Knowledge. It's a DJ company, but they're, they're not in business anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But I bought my mixer. She let me borrow money and everything. Um, turn, uh, a laptop and everything. So <clears> that's <throat> how I started. Nice. So, yeah, so I started. And then I started venturing out on my own where I would, like, I would go with JT Sounds and then, when I built my clientele, you know, I would do gigs on my own. So all the money that I used to do gigs, I turned it around and just bought equipment, equipment. And at the same time, I paid Miwako back. Yeah. It paid for itself. So, yeah, it just paid for itself. Now, now that I have, a, I have my full gear, everything's 100% paid. Nice. And everything. And I still, I still um, buying stuff. Yeah, you know I mean, um, but, you know, a lot of stuff I buy, it just ends up sitting in the, in the <laughs> <laughs> collecting dust. I have like a controller just sitting down there over here and everything. But you know, I probably would pass this on to my son down down the line and everything. That's awesome. Yeah. So, but, yeah. so you know, I started my you know everything just ventured off. Nemo would always support me what I do and everything. And you probably know the story, right? So you know, she passed away two years ago. We had a, uh, a son named Karsten, yeah, and he's living in um, Tokyo right now with my father-in-law. So. It, it, I'm so proud because he can talk two languages now. So every <clears> Saturday, <throat> yeah, every Saturdays I would FaceTime him and everything. Yeah, he's getting big and everything. So how, it, how old it, is he now? Less, yeah. He's almost uh, four years old already. Wow. January 24th, he turns four. Yeah, wow. so he talks to me. He can speak a little bit Japanese, but he can understand. Mm -hmm. But his English is there because his school teaches him both sides. Yeah. yeah. And everything. Yeah. So the plan is that, you know, we still got to talk about me and Papa, but the plan is for him to come back. Because, you know, right. Papa getting four, yeah. But, yeah, so, you know. As, as was he born? Years, he was born here, right? Sorry. He was born here, yeah. Okay. So, he has, dual, just, yeah, he has dual citizenship and everything. Okay. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, you know, when she passed away, I kind of, like, lost hope about, like, you know, it, the, my world just came crashing down. But, yeah. you know, it gave, it gave me time. It gave me, like, a year to get ready. When, you know, because I already know when she was in hospital, it gave me time to like strengthen, like know what's coming. But then when that day happened, yeah, it was, it was like, oh, you know what I mean? It was yeah. Tuesday, yeah. To this day, I always made a promise. It's been over two years. Every first week of the month, I always visit her grave. Every, that's why I think I cannot move out of Hawaii yet. Mm -hmm. It's because that connection's still there. But yeah, I lost hope and everything, like thinking that I'm never gonna like, you know, fine, cause I'm already like 48 years old. You know, like, <clears> I, like, couldn't had, tell, like, I couldn't tell, bro. Yeah, we, we, had, we had a plan you know, and everything, but so, you know, but, you know, it was a blessing. I kept praying, Lord, that one day that, you know, hopefully he'll, he'll um, um, join me up with another, you know, a person that's very good, and sure enough, sure. And yeah, so I've been with this girl named Elizabeth on this, and oh, dude, she's like, she's like the world, bro. I, I, I I'm believe, happy for you, man. Yeah, yeah, dude, like, she has all the qualities, man. You know, she, she source, supports me, my DJ. She cooks for you not to eat Simon. That's important. <laughs> yes. That's very important. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So she takes care of me and everything. And she has all the traits and everything. So it, it's a big ups to her. But the main thing is that she understands my situation with me about me visiting her grave there. So that's a big plus for me. So yeah. That's awesome, bro. So you know, and, and Tuesday I'm still I'm still um, DJing. So every Thursdays I have a something Thursdays on twitch.tv backslash DJ underscore Kakai. Mm -hmm. where I offer monthly prizes. Um, oh so, yeah, I saw that on Instagram. Not to criticize. Yeah, I was going to ask, see. like, I was like, yeah, I know you do some kind of, um, like, contest giveaway every Thursday. Yeah. I was going to ask what that was about. It's, it's all about, okay, so I was thinking that I've been blessed so much that instead of receiving, you know, because on Twitch you can make money, right? right? And I know a lot of DJs, they're hurting right now because it just killed the industry, but a lot of DJs went out of work and everything, you know what I mean? So it's like, they got to do what they do and they can make money off Twitch, but you know, if they want to give to me, it's okay. But, uh, you know, as I said, I, I've been blessed with my job and everything. So it's like, I want to give back. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I could give back to everybody. But, you know, I, I, I thought of, hey, man, why don't I just have a, a monthly prize? I didn't see a DJ that do that because I like to think out the box. I like to do things differently. So every month, 
I do a monthly giveaway. So nice. then, um, yeah, so in August, <laughs> pardon me? <laughs> Where have I been? Now on something. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta come on my channel every Thursday from six to eight thirty. I do Twitch. I do like a um, a theme. So this okay. week it's gonna be a cultural theme. Okay. And I like to dress. You probably saw my videos how I dress I've up. I've seen a few. I've seen yeah. a few. Yeah. So with the eth different artists. ethnicity, right? Every month. Yeah, ethnicities. Yeah. So it's gonna be this one next month. Next week will be like an EDM party, and then the following I think um, I'm gonna take off because my girlfriend's birthday. And then it's just gonna move on. But every month I have a prize giveaway. So August was a hundred dollar cash. A girl won it. Where have I cash. been? Yeah, and then this Jeez. this month, DJ LT won the Foot Locker card, and he's going to pick price. up LeBron's. That's, <laughs> That's what price. he wants. He wants the LeBron's, and then this month will be uh, Amazon. October will be Amazon card, and then oh, November price. November will be um, supposed to be a Swatch watch, but I might do like a <laughs> gift card, probably a Visa card. You know, I mean, I mean, it's nice to have a Swatch watch, but I'd rather have yeah, yeah, so yeah. they can do what they want. Right? But then. The grand prize is five hundred dollars cash. Okay, I'm entering this contest in, in December. Yeah, five hundred dollars cash <laughs> plus plus a question mark. So they get five hundred dollars plus something. Awesome. So yeah, I I, I kind of wanted to make it bigger, but then you know some some of my um, friends are like, oh, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. thinking of wearing like a thousand dollars or something, but uh, I said okay, five hundred is good enough. Yeah. But yeah, save some free stuff. Yeah, going bro. back to the. Yeah, yeah, going back to that, I just I just want to give back to the um, that's awesome. to whoever I mean, whoever, you know, it, and plus it's a good way of marketing, you know. I, mm -hmm. I don't care about my viewers and everything. It's just it gives me time on Thursdays to um, play do what my, you love. Yeah, yeah, do what I love and everything, you know. You know, I'm sorry, I'm, bro. I'm, I'm, I don't I don't mean to cut you off. Is it possible to turn your screen this way, is it, or is it see. is this how it is? I have it up. Is that better? That's better. There you go. Hey, there you, there go. you go. Sorry, sorry. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh. That's <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I, I had I had to ask. Um, I wanted to ask this on a personal level. Um, yeah. Obviously, you you're a DJ, right? So obviously you have a you have a love and passion for music. Do you do you have a specific, or not one? Maybe there's a few. Do you have a specific genre that you personally love to listen to for yourself and also to mix, or just it's kind of like whatever. It, you know what's so funny? I was leaving work. And I said. I have a feeling he's gonna ask me that. <laughs> so yeah, I, I swear to I swear to God. Yeah, so well, yeah, I had to know because like I'm sure you do a lot of different kind of events with different yeah. kind of music, different kind of people. So yeah. honestly, I don't really have a favorite genre. Um, as I said, I like just to match the beats. As long as it sounds good, it sounds good. But mm -hmm. if you had to ask me, I would love the I love old school music. Right. Old school music. I love personally I love the eighties. Right. So yeah, I personally love the eighties, but I just said I could spin anything. Mm -hmm. I could spin anything, but it's always important for I guess a DJs to know the genre of music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you know. So I hear some DJs like, "Oh man, I'm gonna spin some trap." Next, thing you know, the thing is twerk. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> wait, you know what I mean? But yeah, you know, I just say you know, as I said, I'm still learning the the the, uh, the song industry. I don't, there's quite a few artists, especially now the new school stuff. It's like, you know, it, it's, it's like homework, man. It's like I, right. I, this past two days, I downloaded music and dude, it's homework because you, it's easy to download, but it's just a matter of um, organizing mm -hmm. by genre on your crates, making the way you want and everything. So, um, yeah, it's like homework. So it's like every time I'm like, oh, man, I got to go download music. Oh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, pretty much I don't really have a, a favorite genre. It's just, it's just a know, music lover in general. I'm just a music lover in general. Right. I mean, when I you mean, got started, oh sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, the way you said, I'm sorry. No, um, when you got started, were there ever moments where like um you did gigs or whatever, and then the response or the liveliness of the crowd wasn't exactly where it was, and then if that oh. if that happened, how did you? Is it important to know like what who your audience is, so what you know what to play, what type of genre, what type of you know what I'm saying? Oh yes, most definitely. So. You know, as a DJ, I, when I teach younger um, kids and everything, it's not all about like it's the way how you present yourself as a DJ. It's like now that you have a laptop, you have DJs just like this. You know what I mean? Instead of having eye contact with the crowd, mm -hmm. so that's very important. You have eye contact with the crowd, but you gotta you gotta read what kind of music they like. It's all about experimenting. Mm -hmm. You know, it, if you come to a a Samoan party, right? You can go play Filipino music. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
<laughs> you got the electric, you got like um, yeah, ocho ocho at a subway you know, for it. They, they like electric slide. They like to keep it shuffle, but it's all about experimenting. You can't just play what you want, especially when you're doing a club thing. Mm -hmm. You can't just play what, what you want. You got to feel the crowd. You got to yeah. feel the crowd, see what they think. Because I'm going to be honest with you. There's some parties. I tried every possible way of playing the genre. I still can't get them going. You ain't going to mm -hmm. be successful for every party. Right. Trust me. You ain't gonna be. It, it's a learning it's a learning lesson. You know what I mean? I think I went, there was this one time I went to a wedding. It was all old, like majority all old people. And the DJ was just playing, I think he was playing um, like rap music, mm -hmm. straight on rap. And it was all old people. <laughs> you know, when you have old people, you want to play something. What is this bit, you know? rap you're playing? <laughs> you want, this you play one of hip hop like, you, you are playing in my daughter's <laughs> wedding? <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, it's basically yeah it's like you just have you have to read the crowd it's all about um being a proper people person uh -huh. and everything and and, and um, communicating with your crowd and everything that's why so it's important what, i'm assuming oh, yeah. to have a wide genre i mean wide like variety and be a fan yes, also of different types of music because you don't want to yeah, be spinning nothing that you're not feeling yourself right yeah and and one of the things one of the things that djs gotta deal with is requests <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one of those people who ask, so I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you request, Not all the like, time. I put one in every time. I, I had times where, like, I'm like, poor, part just feeling the music, and then there was a person, hey, man, uh, can you play some country songs and everything? And, you know, I'm like, but then, you know, they drop a tip and everything, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple times where somebody dropped me a hundred bucks. Wow. Um, for one for song? Tips, yeah, Jeez. for one song. And then I'm like, okay, I'll cut it off. Man, you right. know what I mean? For hundred dollars, you know what I mean? But yeah, that is one of the worstest nightmare is having requests because you know you'll you'll have people like I'm sure you probably see a lot of videos where they'll like take their phone, yeah, and then hey, I don't know what the name of the song, but then they'll like it goes like mm -hmm, <laughs> and then I'm over <laughs> I'm over there trying to figure out what song is it because they don't know the title. Uh huh. That's yeah, why they made Shazam, bro. It's an yeah. app download. <laughs> Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> what song do you want to hear? Yeah, he goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I try my best to play the requests. Mm -hmm. It's because one thing important is that if you don't have that open, positive attitude, it's the person that makes you popular out there. Yeah. And people don't get it. I mean, the I'm word of mouth, they'll people. refer you. Oh, exactly. They'll, they'll, you know, they're like, oh man, Kyber, he's such a bad, man, his song selection is junk. It just it's like a ripple right yeah you know i mean that's why i i play request man and that's your request. this is your brand this is how you put food exactly. on the table and then yeah. what, I'll, what i'll do is like if it's if i feel, feel like it's off like oh man it's gonna kill it i'll play the song but i'll add like extra flavor to it like a uh -huh. beat to it yeah to make that oh oh remix you know what I, mean? That kind of <laughs> stuff. I mean yeah yeah, yeah I, I i have a, i'm gonna have a awesome i have a I, i'm planning to have an awesome set this saturday i mean i admit i'm getting i'm nervous but Mm -hmm. I, I want to kill it this Saturday. This is like a big platform for me. Yeah. So. I had to ask, man, because um, you said you've been doing this <clears throat> since the 80s, right? You started yes, in the 80s. Now. And I'm a yeah. big fan also of old school music. Like, we're talking about like rock, R&B, hip hop. I, I love a lot of 80s and 90s. And I just, so I just want to get your opinion because there's, um, because of technology and how things have changed. How has the DJing scene changed from the 80s to all the way now, 2020? Oh, that's, that's a simple, you, okay, so a lot of music now is, what wrecks it is all these cuss words, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, just, they just wreck it up and you can just make any beat, like it, it's everything just progressed now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, the beats and everything, some, some of the things that you, you can just like, oh, I'm gonna hit you with a hammer. I'm gonna hit with your hand. You can just say that one statement, add a beat to it, I think it's gonna take off. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no true. there's no meaning to the song like in the eighties. Very but true. I can tell you one thing, I always tell the young girls, old school music will always prevail over the new music. They're timeless. Right? Yeah. Oh, timeless, but there's got there's there's people that's not even born. And then when I throw them on, like don't stop believing, they're like, Oh man, I know these songs. Like yeah, wait, yeah. you you wasn't born, you know what I mean? Like it's exactly. like, so it's like yeah, dude, like, even when I play in Vegas, I'll, pull, I'll throw in some old school, and they're like, oh, yummy, mm -hmm. out, of, out of club, out of regular club, but I'll add, like, a little bit to the 80s. It's just to kind of, like, um, have that feel a little bit, yeah. you know what I mean? But um, 
yeah, it, everything's progressed. It's just the the beats, the the whole scene. As I said, everybody wrecks it off with, with like bad words and everything. You know, I have nothing against it, but it just that's why mm -hmm. when I download music, I try to download majority all clean music. Right. You know what I mean, it's because as a DJ, I just want to try to set a role, be like a role model, like set mm -hmm. that tone. You know what I mean? Try to. You know, as I said, you know, it's just, it's, you're the DJ, you're the one controlling that whole room. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, you, you can be, you can fail, you can be successful. That's all that matters. Yeah. That counts, right? yeah so. No, and I like what you said earlier, like not to, not to disrespect anybody. Yeah, I respect anybody who is passionate about their craft and they do it well. And then there's some people where it's a job, you know, um, like, but what you said earlier, that makes me think about, because there's people like you who mm -hmm. are very, um, I guess it's also depending on the event, but. There's people like you, they're very engaged with the audience, the crowd, they're, they're talking in between sets, in between songs, and they're trying to get people into it. And then they're actually mixing, they're on the tables, and they're making the beat. And then there's those who are just glued to the laptop. Like, right, they, don't, right. they don't say nothing all day. They don't, they don't talk to anybody all night. They show up, boom. Sometimes it's an iPod to an Oxford, and then they're gone, you know? So I really respect people who, when I watch them spin, I respect DJs who, like you, you look at him and you know he's having fun. You know this is what he loves to do. Right. You know that he's passionate about it, and that and that's you. So, have you ever experienced like just people like sharing that joy? Like you're in the moment, you don't even realize you're at an event. You're just having fun because this is what you love to do. And then exactly, yeah, it, yeah. It's 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 just you know like you're bobbing. You're like you know like huh, oh, oh, you know what I mean like this. Like yeah. I'm sure you probably heard of DJ Hoppa Boy. I have, I have yeah. yeah. You see how energy that guy is, man. Yeah. He's like oh, oh. It's on the microphone. That's not, it's all about basically rocking the party, man. Right. Rocking the party, turning, you know, but then you have DJ like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah, definitely. You know, like, and I'll, 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 I'll actually, I, I did a couple times, I'll be like, ah, I'll just go in the front, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's go. Yeah, I'll, I'll be like that today. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, it's, you know, I mean, I, I've been very successful. And as I said, you know, I don't want to bring that up. I mean, we live in this world called hate, right? Right. We have a lot of haters. Everybody has a lot of haters. And, you know, I always tell people that when they hate and everything, or like, they take it personal. I tell them, guys, like, you gotta not think about what people think about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you, when somebody hating about it, that means you're doing something good. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Definitely. I gotta admit, I have haters on my side, but I still invite them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I still invite them. Yeah. I, I still invite them because, you know, I, I as I said, you know, I don't want to have that uh, uh, demeanor about, you know, like trying to, you know, like you know, I'm better than you and you mm -hmm. know what I mean, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but try to share the passion of music right. of what I do. Cause I, music I, brings people together. Yeah. I'm an old school DJ. I've been DJ since 89. I DJ longer than a lot of the DJs ever, but you see all the DJs now, they're like super good, like tech, mm -hmm. Budabud, you know, all these guys and everything. So it's like, as an older person, I looked down on that. I still taking notes from them. You know what right. I mean? I learning. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you can learn I didn't from know how to scratch. Yeah. I always wanted to scratch. Like I didn't know how to scratch, and I was like, "Oh man, so I did this, that man." I put the work into it. I, I went on YouTube and I was just practicing. You did know what I mean? Um, how to do that? Get that coordination. It's like playing the drums, coordination, and everything. And mm -hmm. then I started developing my own patterns. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. So. Yeah, I always said like, man, people only throw shade on what shines. You know. Like exactly. I seen, exactly. I seen this. I think Timothy De Laguerre, You know that is he's like a YouTube. Uh, he's on Wilder now. He's like an actor, rapper, comedian. He started on YouTube. He he said one time, and it stuck with me. He's like, you know, life is like video game. Like if you're encountering enemies, you're going the right, right. direction. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. yeah, man. I definitely, I definitely agree. Um, you know, for me personally, like, like when I hit middle school, especially. That's when I really, I, I love all genres. And like when I do parties and stuff, like my Uncle Dan and they have us be the band and we play music for weddings and parties and mm -hmm. uh, you know, all that. Like we play a variety, we play rock and roll. Sometimes like we'll play R&B or like Filipino music also. And it's like live music with instruments and singing. And then, but and when I hit middle school, that's when I really fell in love with hip hop. And then, you know, DJing and hip hop, they're married. You know, and you can't really, right. you can't get away from that. So there was, there's a few DJs along the way as I grew up that I really like, I learned, I learned, would love to respect. Like um, DJ Premier, like he, oh yeah, he did a song on like one of Ludacris' albums called MVP, where he took one of like Luda's lines 
and the way he scratched it and just it, he put it in and out of the song it was just so effortless like oh where, how did you how did you develop your own sound so that you sound original when you're mixing but at the same time like where did you get inspiration from i as i said you know i get inspiration from like uh, my brother um dj i see all the snapback djs i watch them how they scratch and everything so but creativity it, it all comes out on the dj like you know you can just make any, anything you want you know what i mean it's just like building a cake and everything it's just <laughs> how do you want you know what I mean? how do you want to where do you want to put this music and everything and you know I, i'm not perfect man i i still screw up you know what i mean but you don't want to do that during a show mm. or anything you know what i mean because there's yeah. people that trade wrecks and everything but yeah i mean yeah, it's like my inspiration is all these um, um, DJs, like from the Snapback crew and everything. I watch YouTube, all these Red Bull um, DC champions and everything. So, yeah, I, I, I try to learn. I'm like, you know, one day, like, I'm going to learn how to scratch because I was I was having a hard time scratching. I used to scratch on my right-hand side, and that's just the base of it. You know what I mean? I didn't know how to scratch with the left, but that's where that's where you can cut it up and everything. Mm -hmm. and I just started. I just started with my left, just kept doing. That's why when I I play basketball, so I used to play basketball before, and I can play that. By the way, yeah, Lick, oh, you, you know that they they <laughs> won the championship for Kobe, baby. Let's go. Hey, we have to this so, year. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but I, I said big congratulations to Miami, Miami. You know I mean? But uh, I like <laughs> but um, no, it's Lakers yeah, all day, all every day over here, bro. Yeah, so I, I DJ on my left. I scratch a lot on my my left side. No. It was mm -hmm. tripping because I used to do a lot with my right hand. It's like I neglected my right hand. And Are you right-handed? Hand oh, because yeah, I mean right the laptop, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm just right-handed. This is my power, power hand. So okay. on my left, I, I always learned to, like when I was practicing basketball, I always struggled with the left to get used to it. Right. And everything, yeah. Left with the, everything, I was just practicing. So it's the same thing with, um, with records. You know, you want to have that hand coordination when you're scratching because you're, you're, you're guiding the, the, the record this way, but then you're making the patterns with your feet. You're like, you know I mean, it's your oh, okay. Yeah, I pattern. always wondered, like, yeah, okay, it's like okay. the drums, you know what I mean? That makes like, sense. You know I mean? Yeah, okay. so it's like, I, I had a hard time doing it, and I'm not perfect, yeah, I still screw up on my thing, but it's just, you gotta feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's times you won't feel it. I just hope I feel it this Saturday. <laughs> 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 yeah, because I plan to um, do, uh, do a little bit scratching, but not too much scratching. That's, when I do parties like that, I, I hardly scratch. Right. I mean, because it's all about Because sometimes there's like, over. if it's like a wedding, they'll just have you, they'll have yeah. a playlist for you, right? They'll just ask you. This, yeah, a playlist, and like then you just, you, just build, you just build from there. Yeah. Scratch. And, and there's times where I'll scratch a song, in, but it won't, it won't be like 30 seconds of, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. people don't want to hear that. You know I mean, mm -hmm. they want you, they, it's all about your, it comes down to your personality and your song selections. Right. You know I mean, that's what's going to make you a good DJ. Like, look at that DJ AM, the one yeah. that passed away. Yeah. Yeah, it's rest in peace. He was original, man. That guy was just unreal. You know what I mean, so. But, yeah. Man, there's, there's so many people who are DJs or have become DJs that I never would have imagined. Like, it's, I guess, it just, music is universal. Like, like I said, everyone loves music and it brings people together. And, like, and I respect them a lot, like Shaq, <laughs> Snoop Dogg, Michael Bisping, the UFC fighter, a retired UFC fighter. I didn't know all these people like DJ, and I have a lot of Who's friends. That? Who? Especially Sorry? that comedian. That, um, that, that comedian's a DJ. He, who's that? Um, that um, Indian comedian, that funny one. I forget oh, his Russell name. Peters. Wow, you seen him? Rip yeah, it? I, I have. Like, I have. I was like, no way this guy can him DJ. Too. I was like, huh? For him and then, um, what's his name, Nick Cannon? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah Nick Cannon. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I I couldn't believe Shaq. <laughs> Man, he's 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 not bad. And he keeps up too uh, with the times and like what's going oh, yeah. at the moment. And like you know what I respect a lot about because I have a lot of friends also who I who are DJs whether it be professionally or for fun, and all the time on social media I see them practicing, and like people don't understand like before you do a gig. I mean, if it's a simple gig like a birthday party, you just got to play music. I understand that you can just wake up and do it, especially if you've been experienced. But like for events. Like people don't understand how much practice goes into it and just knowing and sounding it like you know what you're doing like i respect you guys a lot i, see, I follow a lot of people who do this and they're on their stories or their posts they're always practicing so how much how right. oft, like how often do you feel like did you hit a certain point where you can kind of just wake up go to the event 
bang it out and it's smooth or do you religiously still practice like all the time? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be honest with you because I need this question to come up and I, and everybody asks me this. Right. So there's a lot of DJs that make sets mm -hmm. and everything. But I practice like when I come home, like one hour a day. I'm not saying every day, but majority of the time I'll practice an hour a day. But me, I like to wing it. I go with the flow. <laughs> I go with the flow. I mean, nice. when I do weddings and everything, I'll get their song selection. And of course, I'll play their song. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll play their song. But then I'll, I'll like build the energy from other songs that they never planned. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the thing. That's why I don't, I don't like to make sets. I like to wing it. Like this, when I do the infamous play, um, I have my songs that I want to play, but I'm going to wing it. I'm just right. going to feel it. You know what I mean? I'm going to feel it, how it's going. But it's going to feel weird kind of like doing the camera. You don't have a crowd. You, you have your crowd on twitch you know what i mean mm -hmm, true but you know what i mean i just want to keep that energy there keep the energy but yeah that's my answer too it's like i never make sets man i hardly make. in fact one percent of the time i'll make a set but i'm just like get up pack, put my stuff in the car set up and just wing it because right, you got the experience you know what i mean like i oh. feel the same way like um like I, i've been playing music live instruments yeah. and singing and all that i've been doing that since i was since i could talk and since i could walk you know what i mean yeah and then we do it every sunday for church so it's like whether it be sunday morning service where we got to play music and i think of the lineup on the spot or i was told the lineup and i jump in or like we got to do a party and like oh you guys got to play music for like this amount of time or like can you guys do the wedding reception music for this amount of time man and just <laughs> sometimes i feel you like you just hit a certain point where it's because first of all you love it and it's natural and you're experienced and you have all the practice i can just pull it out my pocket like nothing you know and then there's exactly. times where like yeah like i you're indirectly practicing like you'd be jamming at home and all that so i i def i definitely feel you on that and like like you i was gonna well how you brought up the sets i was gonna ask is it kind of because i'm totally incompetent and unfamiliar with this world like would it be hard actually to do a gig where you have a set and you're so like okay this is how it's gonna go this is how my gig's gonna start i'm gonna do all this and then this is how it's gonna end but then somebody comes with a request and you gotta break your set and they might totally throw off your whole night does that like is that a thing does that happen oh that 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 i mean it doesn't happen to me i, I right. can do that but trust me it happens with a lot of these days so we're like and some of them will give attitude like oh, oh no, i'm gonna no. play your set yeah because it ruins their their set because they have you have a set schedule uh -huh. and that for me in my opinion i mean everybody has their own opinion but for me it's like you have to adapt to what's going out there because i tell you when you do mold car reads they have they have like a timeline and everything but nothing's going to go perfect trust me i did a wedding the the bride actually left the wedding for i think three or four hours because she was so stressed out that nothing according went to plan but you know what i when she came back and everything, I made it up for that night when it was time to DJ. And dude, we went out with a bang at the end of the night. It's, it's this one thing that you just got to win. You got to take a negative moment and just turn it into a positive moment and everything. So, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't have no problem of DJs having a set because that's how they, they're comfortable. And it's good but to have structure. Me, yeah. Right? Yeah. That, but for me, it's like, like a white box. I, I like to think out the box and try to adapt to my environment out there but you know as i said i'm not perfect i mean mm -hmm. there's there's times where like you know i have my moments like oh i gotta throw in the song you know right? so it's a matter of trying to think forecast ahead of time like when is the perfect time to drop this song you know what i mean or yeah. like what i'll do is like if it's something odd i'll like echo out the other one and then i'll scratch the other one like ooh, you know what i mean yeah. try that thing in you know what i mean and as i said add a beat to it like you know, <laughs> it's just yeah it's like when you have a one set it's, like, it's one dimensional yeah, I was going to say, too, it must be, well, for one thing, I, I know that there's a, if there's a trait that most DJs or musicians would have, it's um, adaptability, like, yeah, being able to pivot, you know, especially, yeah. like, if you're playing, like, if, if it's, like, a project grad for a, a high school, more yeah. than likely, you're playing pop and hip-hop, you know what I mean, what's on the right. radio, and then maybe all of a sudden there's a shift in the mood and then you got to play a country song. Like, how does that fit? You got to make it work, you know, or whatever, oh, or it's a oh, slow oh. song where it's time to dance, you know, like slow dance. You got to totally change the vibe and it has to, the transition is important because you cannot just right. be here and then it drops. You have to, the transition got to be smooth, right? Does that take practice right, as well or you kind of just do it? Oh, I just wing it. So what I do is <laughs> it's called, for me, I call it camouflage. 
So, so it's time for a slow dance, right? So yeah, what I'll do is I'll get creative with my time. And then I'll talk out of my, okay, ladies and gentlemen, right about now, you know what I mean? I'll yeah, kind of yeah. like camouflage it to kind of like with my, my mouth, my, my uh, voice to go into that slow song beat. And trust me, um, they love slow jams, but I will, I'll play the original, but as I said, I'll add like a backdrop beat to it. Like, ooh. Oh, just like, you know I mean? like remix it all yeah exactly that's that vibe you know what I mean I as that. I said you, you just you just have to adapt to especially high school oh my goodness when you do high school dance I, you gotta have like a a whole composition book because the request is outrageous the oh it's just off the wall. I supposed to do the Lelehua um, uh, grad night mm -hmm. but this COVID thing um, came up um, yeah so yeah they, they came up to me and asked me if I can they, you know, have a song list and Play what I like, but of course, when you do high school, you gotta do all clean version, yeah, yeah, yeah. But some of the songs was like, whoa, like especially when I did in, when I was living in Vegas, I had song selection where like, hey man, can you play Cotton Eye Joe? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's from hip hop. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's from hip hop to right. Cotton Eye Joe. But a good thing about that we have as a DJ as a tool is called transition music. You know, oh, so yeah, it's yeah. like you know you're dropping from like 108. Good and then you go to 128, mm -hmm. you know? If you don't have a song, what I'll do is I'll make my own transition where I'll match a 108. So that's one thing good with turntables is that you can go from, you know, the tempo from uh, 8, 16, and 50. So you can match that up. So when you're when you're matching the other beat to like, uh, one, you're taking a 105 and you put it into 120, of course it's gonna be like chipmunks, right? right? So I put a downbeat. So what I'll do is that I'll camouflage it. Like I'll do my drop, like, you know, you're listening to sounds of DJ, but while, while that's going on, I'm dropping the, I'm dropping the fast beat. I mean, I'm dropping the uh, the fast beat to a slow beat. So it's subtle, okay. like they don't really know. Yeah, so it. Next thing you know, the slow songs play. Exactly. So it's camouflaging into that thing, so they're not hearing like, like. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, so it's because not like, sudden. Like. Yeah. So yeah. So my my drop is like you're listening to sounds of DJ. There. So in the meantime, I'm dropping that thing so they don't hear that. That's so smart. Yeah. yeah. So that that's that's why I do. I get creative in, in my thing. But if it's something where it has to be a hard cut, I'll do like a scratch part, like, you know what I mean? Right, right, and just to like phase it out. Yeah. Exactly, so exactly. That's how you can tell you're a seasoned vet in this thing. Oh, dude, <laughs> I just said, I'm still pretty, so. <laughs> no, I like that about you because you you have been doing this for a while. You 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 are like experienced and you're a veteran at this, but you, you can always learn. You know, the best teacher can get taught. You're still learning, you're even humble enough to admit that you learn from people younger than you or who started later. And that that's that's why you're you've reached a certain level of success and competence and skill with this, you know? It's right. because you're you you're always a student of the game. Right, exactly. Game, exactly. Anyway. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and since you brought it up, um how since you brought it up numerous times, I never did actually ask that I've been meaning to. What is going on this Saturday? Like what's the event that you got coming up? So um this Saturday I got in um if they go on Twitch, it's called Hawaii's Infamous Mix Plate. So H A W A I I S, infamous. You know I N F A M O U S, mix plate. Mix E D or mix? Oh no, M I X. Past it. M I X plate. P L A T E. So if you saw it on my Instagram, it's on my Instagram. The the flyer and everything. You can tune in this Saturday at from six p.m. I think I'll be DJing for three hours, and then he has a he has a podcast just like you. No. Yeah, and everything. So. His channel is pretty, pretty, um, pretty large and everything, yeah. And I said that I have my third, it's called Thumping Thursdays every Thursday. It's the only day I Twitch. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So, but yeah, this Saturday is a big, uh, it's a big thing for me. I'm, I'm kind of excited. I'm actually excited. To hey, congratulations, man! Happy for you that you got that gig. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I got, I got invited and everything. But I, I don't personally know Matt, but like I have friends that know him and everything. So, so it's, it's a big kudos to him. So mm -hmm. I think I think Hawaii Infamous Mix Plate were inviting me. Oh, that's so, awesome! No, I'm I'm just yeah. happy to hear that you have stuff going on, especially because you said the industry kind of took a yeah. hit because of COVID, and you know there's not really a lot of parties going. I mean, there shouldn't be any <laughs> parties going right. on. So like you guys, this is how you guys make bread, right? So I'm happy for you that you got that. I was just exposure and doing what you love still yet, even in the exactly. midst of this pandemic. So I, I was actually gonna go to um, Japan in November to DJ. I was supposed to be in Shinjuku oh, yeah? and Shibuya, but I'm gonna pull that off on the bird. I mean, I can go. I can enter Japan. They're already coming and everything. Oh, but it's a matter. I'm getting worried about coming back. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a, because you know that's a that's the problem and everything. I'm supposed to have actually on my work. I'm supposed to actually go to Reno, 
and um, do my uh, certification for one of the ventilators because uh, I'm a biomed engineer, so I repair all the medical equipment in the hospital. Are you really? Yeah. So, Mom, where'd you graduate yeah. from? Uh, you know, I actually got lucky. I, I don't have a degree in the biomed electronics um, okay. side of it. It's just when I, I used to work for Pepsi and Frito Lay, so I learned reverse osmosis, RO production, yeah. of the production um, uh, operator, and everything. So, an opening came up in dialysis. And of course, okay. you know, dialysis does reverse RO water, right? Mm -hmm. In water. So, I became a biomed in, at the White Hall One. It was used to be Liberty Dialysis, but now it's called Fresenius. And so, I worked for them for two years. So, a a, a opening for general biomed open for Aramark. So I, you know, quick story. So I, I see this as a blessing. Yeah, this, this is actually one of the reasons why my career took off is no, I saw a, a, yeah, I saw a, a um, what you might call it, an opening for Aramark for a general biomed physician engineer. Of course, that pays really well. So, mm -hmm. but you know, I was telling myself, and I was looking at the qualification, uh, you need a electronics degree, blah, 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 this. Uh, and I was like, ah, oh, man. So what I did is that I said, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply. I applied for it. Next thing you know, I think it's like two weeks, I got a phone interview. And then I got set up for a actual interview with the manager. And so I went in there, we had our interview at KFC Waikele. Cool guy, <laughs> his name was Rick. So big, uh, big shout out to Rick over there. So yeah, so there, I was up against a lot of like strong candidates and I didn't think I was gonna get it. But so I went home, the next day he called me up and he, he offered me a decision. So I think it was like a couple of weeks and I asked, hey Rick, I'm just curious, why did you hire me um, out of all these strong candidates and I don't even have a degree? And he goes, well, you know, Dexter, I just want to say that anybody can troubleshoot a machine, fix a problem and everything, but not a whole lot of people have the personality. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, know I mean? you remember, you're going to deal with, you're going to deal with charge nurses. Yeah. You're going to deal with people and they're going to come up to you with a problem. If you don't have that mentality or that personality, to be customer oriented because there's a lot of techs that I know in our industry is they're good at fixing things but when it comes to you know I mean? relationships with the customer care. yeah they don't especially have especially in the medical field it's important lives it, are on the line oh trust me man like today man I got bombed with so much calls like oh Dexter my machine's not working you go over there like the, the machine's not even plugged in I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I have times where like that they panic they panic because they're like oh my machine's not working I'm like I go over there, oh, you forgot to plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah that's the most, stuff, did you yeah. turn it on? Like, yeah. Hey, yeah I gotta, remember, we're, we're, we look at, we're the customer to the nurses, right. to the doctors and everything. So we have to look at it like it's, like, it, it's a joke. It, yeah. It's a joke within the nurse, the uh, hospital stuff. So, but it, that actually, that was, that's how I started out. So it, it, to this day, I work for General Electric. So this is the company I want to retire, mm -hmm. man. I was so surprised yeah. I got to General Electric. Yeah. I got to ask, so are you familiar with dialysis? Before I ask this question, I, I am familiar with okay. that. Because I wanted to ask, because I remember, I'm sure it's changed now, maybe with technology and stuff, but I remember when I was a kid, I had a few relatives who regularly needed to, um, to, have, to go have dialysis treatment. And I remember they, they had always, we'd always collect the caps or like the tabs of soda cans, you know, like that little right. aluminum piece. Yeah, yeah. What is that for? I, I would always be willing to help and I was excited to take them off. Which one for dialysis? Something like that, something like which, like they recycle the is I don't know if it's iron or aluminum and it helps something with the blood. I don't know. I just, yeah, I remember. Wow, I, I never, I never did hear that where they that's yeah. nasty. <laughs> no, I, I could be totally wrong. I was a kid, I don't remember, yeah. but I just remember there, there was an association one time where someone was going through dialysis and the machine, something with the iron in the blood, and then those things helped out somehow. I don't know, they were collecting them. Oh, that's so, nasty. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll google it later. I could be totally no, wrong. That's, I don't actually, know. that's. That's dirty stuff, man. Yeah, you know I mean? that, that's dirty stuff because you know Dallas is because your your um, kidneys are pretty much shot. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like so you you run the dialysis, actual dialysis machine. Yeah, I'm the one that fixes the dialysis machine. Wow. Everything. Yeah. So yeah, once you're in dialysis, man, it's you gotta go dialysis twice a week. It depends yeah. on your on your um what the doctor says, what how much you gotta do. But it's sad, man. It's sad, mm -hmm. like your coloration of your skin, you know, and it, and a lot of them were like all in dialysis, is like they're eating cheeseburgers and while well, doing that. <laughs> Not really well, helping themselves. I'm like, though. yo, mister, what are you doing? Eating cheeseburgers and everything. Yeah. So yeah, you, yeah. you can tell, you can tell when they infuse and everything, the blood, if it's dark mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. But it's, it's really sad, bro, what they have to go through. You know, I mean, I've seen, 
I seen a lot of patients, you know, get coated on top of the bed and everything. They have to give them some oh, no Yeah, yeah, man. It's 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 so sad what they got through. And imagine you have to go dialysis for the rest of your life, man. You gotta go twice dialysis a week for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, for the rest of your life, man, until you die. So unless you have a kid, at least you have a you know a transplant. Oh right, and you get one from a donor, yeah. then you don't no longer have but, the problem. Yeah, but then you remember when you have a donor, it depends how your body's gonna react to that new right. organ. You know what I mean? So so but, is yeah. dialysis is not, um sorry. Go ahead. That's so, going. Is dialysis just because I'm not too familiar, is it um is it only a treatment you get when you have kidney failure or what other things lead to ha you having to require dialysis? Oh, it's, it's, it's pretty much kidney failure when, when um, your um, thing is not filtering um, outright, yeah. And oh, okay. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one thing. But then, as I said, you got to get a pre-evaluation and everything. Mm. But when you're in dialysis, it's not like the doctor can just take you. You got to go through a screening. Right. And then you got to see if there's room because the waiting, the waiting list is long, you know, for dialysis. Oh, I can That's why they're that, yeah. not, yeah, it's, 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 it's a stable industry. Yeah, I mean, it's a very mm -hmm. stable industry. Because, Do you, you work full-time, like every day? I was full-time, Monday, well, actually, my days were kind of split because I had to work on the weekends to clean the, 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 the machine, yeah, the units that mm -hmm. cycles the water, because yeah. it gets dirty, yeah? yeah. So whenever they, uh, whenever they're filtering dialysis, it goes into the drain. It goes to the train and it gets built up like you have this cheese and you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. all this cheese build up. It's called urea and everything. So it's like you have the cheese build up and it's like yuck. It's like <laughs> it's like cottage cheese, bro. But that's all the 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 uh, the, the, the waste. Right? The exit. Yeah, the waste. Like what the what supposedly the kidneys would have done? Yeah, so yeah, what the, yeah. But or would have uh, removed from the blood. But, but remember, this is only like a substitute that cleans your kidneys. It ain't the real thing. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, true. Yeah, so, yeah, so, but, yeah. Oh, interesting. I, mean, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know you did all that and you're into that. That's cool. Yeah, I did that. And then I went to General Biman and I got certified. I'm actually certified to do anesthesia, uh, ventilators. Oh, no way. Certain ventilator, yeah, ventilators, uh, telemetry. Um, what else? Um, I, um, I got certified to do. Yeah, pretty much those three things. And as a General Biman, we learned to... Um, Fixed various medical equipment. Wow, you know, here I was thinking you're yeah. just a dope DJ. You're oh, on many no, skills, bro. No, man. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was actually, I was, I mean, I was actually making really good money DJing, and I was planning on DJing full time. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I'm gonna quit my job and DJ full time. And then boom, COVID. I, dude, <laughs> no, no. And then I, I talked to my brother. I talked to him. He said, man, you should keep your job. You should be lucky you work for G and everything. Mm -hmm. Man, that was the best decision ever made because this COVID thing hit, man. Yeah. Oh, like that, like yeah. When 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 you were um as a DJ, when you if you're doing mobile, you you can make like seven to ten thousand dollars a month in cash mm -hmm. under the table, bro. I've heard. Yeah, I've heard. I, I, I mean, so I might just become a DJ. <laughs> With all this quarantine time, I might just pick up DJ skills. I've, once everything goes uh, back I'll, to normal, <laughs> I, I'm just glad I didn't do it full time because there's a lot of my friends that are DJing. They're hurting, yeah. man. They're hurting, man. It's like, yeah, you know, I feel it and I was, dude, I was so on it. Like, I, I'm going to DJ full time. Because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, man, I'm making so much money doing this DJ mobile thing. All my gigs got canceled. My my next year's gig, I'm already kind of like booked already. But, you know, I, I'm going to tell you right now, COVID is going to be here for a while until they find a vaccine. I, yeah, I know. I, I, this is the new yeah, normal, I mean, you know. Is it? Yeah. It's, now that we open up, I wouldn't be surprised the numbers go up. Just give it some time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, especially sure. now that we're in the flu season. Oh yeah, yeah. We're in the flu season. Just oh. especially too with like the mentality of people in Hawaii, like oh no, I'm 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 gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, man. Like yeah, I, I, feel you. I, I, at I work at Castle, so our second floor is all our like COVID units. Oh. And it's 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 like a war zone in there, man. It's like N95 masks is fully suited and everything, mm -hmm. and then. You know what I mean? And then I had to work that far because all the infusion pumps were due for PMs and a lot of the um, COVID patients were using infusion pumps, the ventilators. And remember now, when you're fixing a ventilator, there's no procedure because it's COVID thing. They have to redo everything. Yeah. So now I'm going to the machine. Now. I'm cleaning the machine. What if the COVID, remember COVID can, um, the bacteria can stay on top surfaces for a couple of days. Right. And you know, what was inside the machine? So that's why when I was doing, I always wear gloves when I do units. 
and everything, but oh man, I would wear like I would wear like the suit and everything. Oh, I was so hot for doing it, but bro, I can I can imagine one time because I I work at um the mental hospital in Neville, yeah. We had so sometimes yeah. we we transport patients to um appointments, and like I remember one of our adult patients had a dentist appointment in La Mequila in Kalihi, bro, like. I, I got a, it's a psych patient. You don't know what's going to happen. Huh? I, we got to yeah, be yeah. in there with them, right? So we had to be in there with them. And then the dentist and the assistant, we thought we were just going in. They're like, oh, sorry, you guys got to put all this on. And we're like, so I had the full on trash bag, weight cutting sweatsuit with the, I have it right there actually, with the um the face shield, with the mask, with the goggles, with the hairnet. Man, that was the most uncomfortable hour I <laughs> sat in an AC room on a nice soft couch. That was still the most uncomfortable hot itchy i, I give so much you guys hey, times is changing man this, yeah. this covid changed your whole life right it's here yeah people don't want to believe it but trust me yeah it's here to stay even 2021 i mean until yeah. we find a vaccine it's here i'm so surprised it went this long yeah no i mean i'm not a scientist or whatever but just for, just for those people who not deny that it, this is a real thing or like they downplay it like there, there there's stories of people literally dying from it just so uh, how, how inconsiderate and insensitive some people like are when they uh, I see on social media or in the news when they speak yeah, yeah. about it, they, they kind of disregard it like it's not a real thing. It's just crazy. I, There's people dying from it, you know? Like, oh, I mean, in my own opinion, this is just my opinion, but I, I just think honestly, this is a, this is like a lesson from God. Yeah. I, mean, I think Agreed. it's a lesson Agreed. for because this, this world is so messed up, bro. It's like, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, it, it's and it's the end of times, man. It's the end of I times. Agree. I mean, I don't need to get religious. I know you're a religious person. I actually just started going back to church with my girl. She, um, yeah, so she goes to church on Sunday. So I've been going to church with her, and I, I'll be honest, I was a, I was, oh, I'm kind of like inconsistent. You know, I just said, uh, you know, like when you're blessed, uh, people have the tendency to forget where it came from. It, <clears> I gotta yeah. admit, like when I'm, I, I'm blessed now. But I do my best not to kind of like fall off the path because remember God can take away that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I don't I don't want that. Even when I'm kind of like getting inconsistent, He still didn't take it away. That's why I try to like okay I'm going you know I gotta like mm -hmm. I gotta have a strong mind and just kind of like remember where I came from and and everything. But as I said, I think this is honestly my opinion. Is I think this is a lesson from God. Or like I think so. Just to check people and 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 like I'm proud of you, man, that you went back, but. It's also like, I wouldn't say there's there's a there's a line between being religious and having a relationship with God, you know. And so yeah. every time I have someone always asks me, "Are you religious? Are you religious?" Like religion is man-made, you know. So even though you're not, maybe it is because of legitimately work or something. Even though you can't physically go to church or whatever, and you feel inconsistent, main thing is you're maintaining your relationship with God. Like you, you know, that that's what's important. And I feel like I definitely agree. Like, like I, regarding a lot of issues in the world, like being in quarantine and people being locked up with their thoughts <clears throat> this has definitely brought out like the true colors of a lot of people and like right. it's just realize like you know anything like your 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 material objects whatever your accolades your accomplishments your house your car like life is precious bro like if there's one thing i learned with all this is like man especially with the year starting with kobe dying and the chadwick boseman it's like man god like life is it's here and then it's not you know so like if we are, if, like if this is a sign, if this is a test and stuff, which I I believe it is also. Like I just try to make sure like I'm a good person and I'm I'm ready, you know, and I'm just living my life. And yeah, and it's it, that's including doing stuff like this, like networking and talking and kicking it real with people like you who I respect and I know are you know like solid people. Yeah, man. Like I like I I appreciate that you said that because it's true, you know. And like we just gotta. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of you, dude. Like, don't don't worry about being inconsistent and stuff, man. Like, you yeah. see, the seed is there, and you 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 acknowledge it. And not to get all preachy on on this video, but like, you know, I, I respect it a lot, and I'm I'm happy for you. Cause like for me, dude, like yeah, like this world is crazy. This world is sick. It's disgusting sometimes. And like you know, everyone, no matter how strong you are, goes through stuff, and you have your low moments. But even even me, like like I just like me personally, if I didn't have God and then things that He blessed me with, like good family, working out outlets like music and stuff man i, I don't know how i deal with my problems I, I lose my exactly life. exactly oh that's awesome bro mm -hmm. awesome yeah i just gotta i don't mean to switch gears like drastically but i remember you did like a 
exhibition grappling thing at UFC where you got in the cage and you grapple with somebody. Who was that? Who was that? And what was that about? So, so this other DJ, um, Wild Wild West, um, 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 he has a mobile company above the entertainment. So big shout out to him. Um, so we decided to have like a, a, a celebrity DJ guest match. Exhibition um, event. For, yeah. yeah, Toys for Tots. Toys for Tots. Nice. And I don't want to add that um, um, Wild West, I think he had like three, four years experience grappling. And I only barely had five months. He's like a purple history. belt in Jiu Jitsu. Oh, dude. Yeah, dude. But, you know, I was like, man, I wanted it so bad. Like, mm -hmm. we went on it. He, and I had him like in a weird naked cholo in the back. I had his back. You guys, did you guys do no gi or was it gi? Um, it was gi with gi. Yeah. Okay. It was gi. Yeah. So I had him on a, it went down good. You know, I was going back and forth. And then, um, I happened to got his back and everything, and I, I got a rear naked choke off, but, you know, I'm kind of still inexperienced, but I, I, I hooked my legs on his stuff, but, you know, he's experienced, so he was trying to, like, ankle lock me from the bottom, where, like, you know, like, he hit the knee. I, you probably saw the video, he the knee, but I knew what he was doing, mm -hmm. so I was trying to move my feet out the way, so, but then I was on that choke hold, and I wanted it so bad, I totally forgot all about the feet, because then he got me at the feet. Oh, so he, that's all you yeah, said. You had his back. And then I had his back. I had his back. I had his back. Oh, and, I see. and I was like, oh, I was like, I wanted so badly. Like, <laughs> oh, I, like oh, I had it synced in all, all the way, but the time, the timer was coming down. But then I round. knew what he was doing. Uh, there was a timer. And then um, uh, I think we had like 30 seconds left before that, you know, we finished. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, I knew what he was trying to do with my feet. But I, what I should have done, I should have like locked him on top of his torso instead of feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what he did is he took my feet the ankle like this, and then he bent it with his legs. And so I totally forgot it this. Yeah. Stabilize his body. But I got to admit, the <clears> next <throat> day, he told me, text him, man, I didn't realize you were that strong, man. Like, you almost broke my jaw and everything. Like, his <laughs> neck was literally sore for like three or four days. Jeez. No, and I remember that day. Because yeah, I was like, I, I wanted that, man. you told me to like, come so watch. And yeah, then, like, I wanted it so badly. It was like, oh. <laughs> but then, it, it, nah, I respect that, man. dude. Yeah, it's what it is, so. No, I think that day I had I, I was already towards the end of my workout and I had something to do. But you you told yeah, me yeah. to come check it out. So I was trying while finishing my workout, I was trying to like just keep an eye on it. I was like, "What is he doing?" I was like, <laughs> "But I didn't yeah. know that it went to Toys for Tots, so it was like a charitable thing." So that's, that's yeah, it was a, it was a awesome. charitable thing. But I, trust me, man, doing jujitsu, man, hold oh, body sore, bro. <laughs> yeah, you blue belt. I, got, yeah. I actually got I actually got injured. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah. One year, so that's why I stopped it. Oh, the doctor actually. told me to stop it. Yeah, and um, what's his name again? The the jujitsu coach again? Um, uh, Chris, I believe. Chris, yeah. Chris. He tell me when are you coming back. When are you come, I still have my gi and everything. It's, yeah, yeah. Oh, I I don't know, man. But oh, the next day my body's sore. I, I usually have to take um, amino acid, drink orange juice, <laughs> and it'll take me like almost a week to heal. Just yeah. calm down. because you're like you're twisting like in motions that you've never been. You know what I mean? Uh huh. And oh, dude, I I used to hate it. But I used to be like. Oh, man, you know what I mean? Bro, I feel you. I've been, I've been in, like, striking my whole life, okay? I've been, like, in karate, I kickbox, I did tournaments with, like, and, like, even my sister them, and I've, I've never gotten, like, a black eye or nothing. Wait. And then I started doing judo a few years ago, and then we roll frequently. It's, like, BJJ every Mondays and Wednesdays. And, like, that's majority of the class some days. <laughs> and like I've since then I've gotten like kneed in the face, I've gotten up kicked in the throat. I got I feel like one of these teeth got chipped. I was like, what the heck? This is this isn't striking me. This is the most damage I've taken in the, when I roll. Right, right. Like, what the heck? Yeah, it's crazy, dude. Oh, that's good, man. Yeah. So uh, do you miss it though? Um, or you miss it because it's. I'll it's be honest with you. I, I, thing, I right? guess when you get a girlfriend, everything changes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like I've been with, I've been with my girlfriend just um. I have I have like um goals I want to reach. Yeah, I mean my next goal is to get my own house. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, I I actually was about to buy one. Um, <clears throat> been about myself. This time I didn't have a girlfriend, but I told my I backed up because I said, man, I don't know if I want to get tied with a thirty year mortgage by myself. Yeah, right, right, I was right. already pre -approved. I was already approved. All I did is had to sign. My money was good. Uh, this was at um whole whole Pili in Ever Beach. Okay. Um, uh, I mean. I was talking to the realtor and everything and everything, but I just told myself, man, I don't think I'm ready by myself with a 30-year mortgage. But then, you know, with my current relationship now, 
I mean, it's too early enough, but then down the line, you know, it depends what the Lord has in store for it, but I do want to right. get a house. Absolutely. That is actually my ultimate goal, yeah. So right now, I'm just renting. I live in Salt Lake. Nice. You know, I'm wasting, I'm wasting my money renting, but uh, it's what it is, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> At least I have my own place, yeah. so, yeah. Hey, um, yeah, before I let you go, man, I want to let you go yeah. on this. Um, Just for our... Because I, I always ask, depending on what their trade or their craft and passion is, I always let my guests um, end the conversation on this note. Because DJing is ultimately like your passion, your love, and you know what you, ref you feel like God put you on this earth to do. To the upcoming DJ who fell in love with turntables and loves music in general and loves putting audiences and groups of people and crowds in a certain move and has the ability to control the room and the vibe and just bring people together and let them leave the event in a great mood. Mm -hmm. What would your advice be to them? Like what's, what's yeah. a valuable piece of information or knowledge you can give to somebody who like, you know, oh, I want to be a DJ. I love this. What would you it, say? It's, it's, it's what, I mean, yeah, it's what, it's what other, I was like, it's like, you probably always hear it and everything. And you're going to hear it from me because like, you know, if, if you want to be something in life, that thing ain't gonna come to you. You have to go, if you're hungry for it, you go out and grab it yourself. You gotta have that mentality. And I, you know, as I said, I advise the other DJs, you know what I mean? Think about the long run, you know what I mean? It, it's a business, mm -hmm. but you said it yet again, it's, it's your passion. You know? It's not all about the money, it's your passion. Yeah. You know, once you build your passion and everything, you're gonna just, you know, keep getting good at it. Practice makes perfect and everything. But I just said, it's, if you want to be, you know, my goal is I want to be a, you know, big DJ and everything. I mean, it's not going to come overnight. You know I mean, mm -hmm. it takes time and practice. It's a matter of uh, the people that you cross by and everything. Uh, but, you know, I, my advice is you just keep at it. You got to be, you got to um, have that um, um, flame in you that, you know, that you want to accomplish this. Here. Yeah. Because I, I didn't think I was going to be where I was because I hear people tell me, hey, man, you came way, like, your scratching is like whole totally up there like from before and everything and that's the kind of like uh, motivation that gets me like oh man yeah you know I mean? and it just gets me practicing more mm -hmm. i mean when you hear good critic but then as a side you got to take negative criticism too as well because that's right. the way to learn too yeah because i get i get negative criticism and i learn from it yeah and everything but yeah, yeah as a dj it's just you just got to keep perfecting your craft man and practice right yeah. practice is pra i'm essential. still practicing my craft yeah you know i mean i'm not like you know, a super good DJ, but it's like I I have enough to pretty much mm -hmm. rock a party. I think so. But oh, no, for sure, man. But, yeah. So and like they but always yeah, say, the right? Like talent, hard work beats talent, and talent refuses to work exactly. hard. You know? I mean, I don't. I just don't play the turntables. I play the piano too. Nice. So, you know, you yeah, make you, have you ever make your own beats? I. You know what? I, Before. I. I would make my own beats, but I kind of like gave up on it after because I was so busy at the time and everything. Because mm -hmm. they have, you know, the software Ableton beats. I actually can make beats with my my drum set right here and this mixer. That's the one thing good about this. You can make beats. Yeah. So when I when I'll drop a song, I'll be like, dun 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 dun. dun. You know what I mean? I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I'll, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. The drum beats. But mm -hmm. I said that eventually I would love to produce. But at hey. this time right now, I've been so busy right now with this COVID thing at the hospital. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah so. But yeah, that's the that's the thing. But my advice is to whoever's the young DJs is just keep that flame going. Grab what you want, man. Because as I said, practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. The more you you do your craft, the more you practice your craft, it's gonna be good. I think regardless, no, I totally agree, man. That's yeah. that's that's steady with regardless of what you want to do in life. You just you have to love it, you know. Yeah. Like you can't think of it as something like a job, because like it'll be a job. And then when the passion exactly. is not there, the drive isn't there, the practice isn't there, the work ethic isn't there. And then overall, all of that adds to the, the product not being there and the result not being there. And then why are exactly. you doing it? You know, I totally exactly. agree. And like your, your following, your shows and your, your skills, your talent, your sets, it all shows, man, the years of experience and the practice. And Thank you. Yeah, I, man, I, I respect you a lot. Dude. Oh, we got oh, to gotta do this again for sure. Oh, appreciate it, man. When the world hopefully goes back to normal, we do it in person, man. Like, thank you for um, thank you for jumping on, joining me, giving me All your time, bro. Right. I appreciate yeah. you a lot, man. You have a good night. Right, Stay safe. You too. I hit you up All soon, right. everybody, ladies and gentlemen. DJ Takai. I'll put all your links in the bottom. Go check you out, man. Thanks, Thanks man. Bye. Good night.